are hearing me well, just give me a sign if that's the case. And um, well, it's a pleasure to be here tonight uh, uh, with all of you. Uh, thank you very much, Mark, for, uh, for uh, hosting us and guiding us. And of course, uh, a big thank you to Elena, to Francesca, to Gaia, and to everyone at the IS that uh, made this, uh, this possible. I'm, uh, I'm genuinely amazed. And uh, you know, I have 15 minutes, I'm gonna keep it to 10 because I see we're a bit behind schedule, so I'm gonna be quicker. And I'm gonna give you a different perspective. Uh, by no way or mean uh, I am anyone to actually teach you anything. But what I would like to give you tonight is a bit of a perspective of how young people can really enter into this discussion and change a bit the world. And I will do this uh, by doing something that I always found useful, which is making it uh, quite uh, um, easy peasy, if you want, quite tangible. And I will tell you a bit about my story to hopefully, uh, you know, uh, give you some ideas of what you could be doing in the future or what you might not want to do with your future. So tonight I'm going to tackle mainly three uh, big things. I would like to, to make three points in the end. The first one is uh, everything is politics. Everything is political. Everything around you is politics. The second one is going to be that uh, the youth has an incredible power and an incredible responsibility in changing the things that we want to change and the things that are not good for us. The third point is that if the youth has an incredible power and an incredible responsibility, you actually have an incredible power and an incredible responsibility as an individual and as a representative of the youth of the world to make the case for a better world. So in the next six or seven minutes, I'm going to just tell you something about this. So my name is Alessandro Darold. I am uh, the managing director of U40. Uh, this is my day-to-day -day job. U40 is the network of young members of the European Parliament. So it's a network which is composed by about 80 members of the European Parliament from the EU 28, uh, 27 states now because uh, uh, of the poor decisions that uh, I am allowed to say the UK made. Um, the youngest member of the European Parliament is 21 years old from Denmark. So not much older or not much younger than some of you. Uh, astonishing. Uh, this young elected politicians came into the European Parliament and uh, my day-to-day -day job with my colleagues is to actually give them a platform so that they make understandable decisions when they actually change politics for the better. When I say that politics and everything is political and everything around you is politics, I mean that every single decision of your life is affected by politics. At some level, Someone decides how much money is going into the education process, how much money goes into the health system when you're sick, how you actually get moving from city to city. That is political. And the most important to understand, the most important thing to understand is that whether you like it or not, whether you're interested in it or not, politics will be interested in you and will affect your life. So this, if this is the first point, then as human beings, we are we live in the European Union, which is uh, many of us, not all of us, but we live in the continent Europe. And we actually look at that and we say, OK, some things are great. Some things are not. And we've heard from some of the speakers before that some things are simply not great. And uh, there you arrive to the point where you say, OK, what what can I do as an individual and what can I do as a member of the society that I represent. And each and every one of us represents someone, represents instances of someone else. So, and this is what I decided to do when I was, uh, when I was uh, uh, 15, a bit younger than, you, than some of your age. And I, I, I told myself, okay, I don't like certain things. And I started talking to my dad. And I realized that talking to my dad was not changing anything. So I started to talk to other people aside from my dad. I, I really bothered some, some important people. And nowadays I'm happy to say that I'm bothering very important people. Whether they listen to me or not, that's a different story, but maybe altogether they will listen to us. And by no mean I'm saying that, uh, you know, um, we need to let go to populism, you know. I'm not saying that uh, everything is bad, but I'm saying that we as young people have the power to make our voice heard. And by this, I will give you a concrete example. Last year, I had the great honor 
and responsibility to actually represent the European youth at the, the G20 youth. So the G20 this year is in Italy. Last year was uh, uh, the, the presidency was owned by, by, Saudi, by Saudi Arabia. And um, the G20 youth is an engagement group that each and every one can, of you can apply to be part of. Each country chooses a few representatives that go into the G20, draft the policy recommendations or several policy recommendations that are sent to the world leader for them to implement. Last year, I, I'm super, it's one of the biggest achievements of my life. I managed coming myself from a small town, a small city in the mountains. I managed to add a couple of words that were, let's not leave anyone behind, especially people that live in less urban areas that actually entered into a policy recommendation that was picked up and signed by the 20 most important leaders of the world. Well, that I am no one. My name is Alessandro. I am someone that studied in a university like some of you are doing, did uh, the high school like some of you are doing, came from a very small village. And yet my words are marked black and white and are signed by 20 leaders of the world. So this to say that every one of you can have an impact. And uh, this is the final point. So if the youth has a responsibility, in changing what we have in front of us. So think about it. One third of the European population is composed by people that are 30 years old or younger. One out of three citizens in the European Union is younger than 30 years old. If we look at the world, actually, this number goes even higher. 50%, one out of two citizens of the world is 30 years old or younger. This means that we have the power we have, and by, by we have the power, I no, I'm not meaning that we should revolutionize the world. Like, let's also be uh, quite, uh, let's also keep our feet on the ground. Let's not like pretend that the world will change from one day to another. And this is something that I've learned in the European Parliament, uh, working for the Commission. You know, the institutions are slowly changing. And we heard earlier from Minister Cingolani that this is a bit uh, um, the story. But we've also heard from him do not be afraid of the things that you do not understand. I would pile up on that and I would say, do not be afraid to take the space that you can take to make the world better for your fellow young people and also for fellow not young people. Because in the end, we have a strength, we have the power to actually change these things. The very final bit that I'm adding to this is, uh, is if, as we said, the youth as a whole, has the responsibility of doing something, I go even farther and I say that even, even each and every one of you, including myself, have a responsibility to do something. What does it mean doing something? It means trying to be interested, first of all. We live in a world where at the tip of your finger there is anything you ever wanted. It's something that our parents can only, were only dreamings, uh, dreaming in, the, in their past. We live in a world where you can have any kind of connection, nurture your network, make sure to be part of the conversation. And I can assure you that by doing that, uh, you will find the place and the space where you can have your voice heard. So I really hope this gives you a couple of ideas you know, on what we can do. Uh, the international association that you are part of uh, is a great starting point to start uh, talking to people to start understanding what other peoples are doing. And then there are a variety of opportunities, like, for example, the G20 that I mentioned to you. There are a number of others. So um, the, last, the last piece of advice that I would give you is uh, do not lose hope. Sometimes we end up doing discussions where we see, you know, uh, by 2030 we should be there. And if you think about it, uh, also in terms of SDGs, Mark, you were mentioning earlier, nine years are not a lot. Nine years are not a lot, that's true. But if we do not start uh, from somewhere, uh, we we hardly will get uh, will get somewhere. So you know, do not lose hope uh, and use the spark that is part of being young to inspire others and to make sure that we change this world for the better for ourselves and for our fellow young people. Less young people, but the people that are will will be young in the future. That is our goal. Let's work for the people that will be young in the future.
Thank you very much and have a great evening. Alessandro, your words are wonderful. Thank you so much uh, of your inspiration. It's so true of what can be done and achieved. I really hope everyone takes it to heart that uh, you can have a big, huge impact. In nine years, believe it, a lot, be, believe it or not, it's only less than a decade till we reach 2030. But think about it. If you're someone, you could have eight children. You could graduate with four degrees. You could write eight to nine books, maybe even 10 books in that time. You could do so much positive uh, with that time in your life. And don't. the biggest takeaway that I have from you is you don't know that it's not impossible and therefore you can do it. You can have an impact. Our next delegate,